science And he loves to play with fire And the things he'll do You can do If you so desire Do try this at home with Mr. T Whoa, hello, hi, welcome back to Do Try This at Home I didn't notice you sitting there I'm your host, Mr. G, and we're back with yet another really cool episode of Do Try This at Home, the show that takes ordinary household items and turns them into something extraordinary. Well, what I've got today is I've got a lesson in air pressure or atmospheric pressure. The atmosphere around us presses down on us at 14.7 pounds per square inch at sea level. That's right, our atmosphere weighs something. In fact, it weighs a lot. And here I'm not at sea level, I'm in Pleasant Home, Ohio, so I figure the atmospheric pressure here is about 14 pounds per square inch. You might remember me breaking that board in half with my stealth karate moves that was being held down by just a sheet of newspaper. That's because the atmospheric pressure was pressing on the newspaper and kept that yardstick in place. Well today we're going to demonstrate atmospheric pressure in a totally different way. What I've got with me today is I've got some birthday cake candles, I've got a lighter, I've got another candle, I've got, um, oh, uh, <laughs> there is one thing here that's kind of dangerous. I've got in a picture here, dihydrogen monoxide. Now, you've got to be very careful if you're going to do this experiment at home because of the dihydrogen monoxide, extremely dangerous liquid. So, let's get started. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to light the candle, or I'm not going to light it, I'm going to melt the end of a couple birthday candles here. And I'm going to put them right on Santa Claus's eye in my Merry Christmas tray. Found this floating up in one of my kitchen cupboards in the back there. You get a big tray like this. And after I got them in here so they don't fall down, and after we've poked Santa right in the eyeball there with them, what we're going to do next is we're going to pour some of the dangerous dihydrogen monoxide. Notice the cool red color of that? Into the tray here. Okay. Actually, I added the red color to the dihydrogen monoxide. It's normally a clear liquid. Okay, what I'm going to do next is, first of all, let me explain something. Now that I've got that liquid here in this pan, the atmospheric pressure around us, again, 14 pounds approximately per square inch here in Pleasant Home, Ohio, is pushing down on that liquid. Now, if we were able to somehow remove from somewhere above the liquid, some of the atmosphere, let's say 21% of it, because 21% of the air around us is oxygen, and oxygen is basically necessary and gets consumed when a fire is made. It's necessary for fire. 78% of our atmosphere around us is actually nitrogen gas, and there's trace elements, a lot of argon. Anyways, let's light these candles. That's next. Be careful not to explode the um, dihydrogen monoxide as well. Okay, here I'm sizzling. That's because on one of the earlier tries at this experiment, I might have gotten them a little wet. But don't worry, they'll start burning here in a second. There, they dried up. Next, I'm going to take this strangely tall drink um, container. This used to care, it used to have some kind of water, flavored water in it. So look for a tall one like this. They work pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. But actually, first, I'm going to take this strangely shaped glass. And I'm going to put it over top of these two candles. Watch what happens. <gasps> wow, as the candles, which are gonna get wet on the end, that's all right. As the candles burned, they took out about 20% of the atmosphere that was inside the glass. But out here, we still have that much atmosphere, the, the extra 20% of the atmosphere. So we've got more weight. The lower pressure inside the glass and the higher pressure outside the glass caused the atmosphere to press down on this liquid, pushing it up into the glass. Wasn't that cool? I thought so. I thought that was way cool, way cool. Okay, I'm gonna try to get those candles to burn again, so let me get some of the liquid off the end of them. Because I'm gonna do this again, but with a little narrow one. It's kind of cool because it goes faster. Your narrower container like this will actually, will, will, the water will be pushed into it at a faster rate. The water? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. I had you going there, didn't I? Dihydrogen monoxide, just a fancy name for simple Water. Okay, here we go. We put, whoa, I don't want it to go out. There, I'll put that over top of it. Now watch this. <gasps> they are going to go out because it put them out. The, the, the water, the colored water actually put them out. 
So there you have it. Because we've got that weight of atmosphere pushing down here, in fact, I would bet that that's about a fifth of the height of that. Let's check here. One candle. Okay, so a little over right from the surface. One candle, two, three, four, and a little more because I, okay, there's one, two, three, four. Yeah, maybe a little bit more because it narrows at the bottom. But that's about 20% of the volume of that, of that container. That's amazing. So you got to see air pressure push liquid up into a container. Remember I told you that the rest of my pets, ever since Lily was on my 32nd episode, the rest of the pets wanted equal air time? Well, they're gonna get it today. So you stand by and don't go away. I'm gonna show you all of Mr. G's pets. I hope you had fun today and remember, do try this at home. Hi, I'm Mr. G and I'm back. We're stalking the elusive animals that live here in the Mr. G home. Let's walk into this room and see if we can see anything. There's one now. We must be very quiet. This particular animal is known as Felinus Coconut Cream Pie. That's right. Coconut is a white long-haired cat and Coconut Head is deaf. Watch. Coconut Head won't hear the sound. Notice she doesn't move. Well, she did because she saw my arm moving. Felinus Coconut Head. Another one of the creatures. This is Caninus Emma. Oh, she's very skittish, easily stirred. I hear something. I hear something moving. Oh, that's Caninus Lily. The very frightened beagle dog. Hard to catch. You saw her in another episode. Felinus Emma. Or not Felinus. Caninus Emma. Half beagle, half yellow lab. Hard to believe, isn't it? <gasps> what do we have here? This is Felinus Pumpkinus also known as Pumpkinhead. By the way, Pumpkinhead, wake up for the people. Wake up, Pumpkinhead. You're getting equal air time. Good job. There's the hard and elusive, hard to catch and elusive Beagle Lily, afraid of the camcorder. <gasps> what do we have here? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's true. This particular feline was featured in one of our other episodes of Do Try This at Home, and this is Felinus Little Bear. Little Bear, say hello to everyone. Why is everybody so tired today? Oh, that's right, it's Saturday. They didn't have to go to work. 